I'm going to talk about creating a network of new scientific industrial cities along the infrastructure corridors connecting Europe and South and East Asia through Russia in particular, and a system of, cor of corridors, the Razvitia system. These would be cities integrating advanced revolutionary scientific research together with the development of new technologies, especially in areas of energy, water, transport, communication, medicine, public health, areas that are relevant for the sustenance of a growing world population. Um, and in this process, I propose drawing in, in particular, small and medium-sized uh, businesses of the Mittelstand type that we know from Germany, uh, northern, northern Italy, high technology private companies, which are extremely efficient, and draw them into this process. Uh, I propose to join in a moral mission to bring together sci fundamental scientific research, which has a, more, a unique human activity generating new knowledge about our universe, together with the moral mission of supporting and developing the lives of all human beings. And this moral mission includes the urgent problem we've been discussing here of dramatically increasing the real productivity of the world economy to provide essential infrastructure for the 21st century with a world population rising to uh, nearly 10 billion by the year 2050. Rapid urbanization, the problem of uh, the growth of elderly populations and so forth. And shifting financial flows uh, into the real economy. So, uh, a couple points of uh, basic eco economics I want to uh, present very quickly. Uh, it is right to uh, d discriminate between the monetary flows, the paper economy, I'd say, and the real economy, but it's also very important to get more precise about what we mean by the real economy. I'll use the term physical economy. If we look at economic activity as a physical process involving matter and, and energy, we could think of it as uh, uh, something like the metabolism of a living organism. But human physical economy develops under the influence of the human mind and uh, goes through scientific and technological revolutions and also revolutions of a, of a social and cultural way. And so we have a situation where um, the key, we have a meeting together of this physical process and a, 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 a mental process. Now, um, this is our, our, the question now is, if we want to approach the world economy with all its problems, what is the most effective instrument that has already been discussed here? Um, the most effective instrument economically to increase the real productivity of the world economy, of this metabolism to sustain human beings, is through infrastructure, especially infrastructure which has the edge of being transformed by new and revolutionary technologies. So we have the uh, a, a large-scale investment into physical infrastructure, transport, energy, communications, public health and medicine, education, other areas, and we inject new technologies into that process. So this is what a famous Russian scholar called the System Жизнь без обеспечения человечества. Now, so where do we go with this? Or one, one additional crucial a principle, the principle of densification. If we look at, at the increase in productivity of humanity, physical productivity, we see a very important aspect which is the densification of processes. Energy densifications, more effective energy technologies are ones that produce more energy per unit uh, volume. We wouldn't have airplanes if we didn't have that kind of process. And we have also the principle of densification illustrated by the, the great development of well-run cities where human activity is densi densified and concentrated. So there's an inverse, in a sense, to just globalization in the, uh, uh, um, that we also want to have a densification. And that's very important because despite all the improvements in communication and so forth, the most effective way for people to work together, and we see it here, is when they're in one place. So we want cities where people work together intensively. Therefore, uh, in a broader sense, the infrastructure corridors that I'll move to just now 
are also, in a certain sense, stretched out cities. They're areas of relative concentration of economic activity. So, now we come to the new cities, and uh, how, is, how is this going to happen? Well, we have many cases in, in history. The Silk Road, the Chinese speak of that, they, the, and they speak of these corridors as the new, uh, the new Silk Road. Uh, well, there's, there are very natural econ uh, economic processes here. There's the enormous requirements and demand for high-tech goods, particularly also infrastructural goods in the urbanization process going on in Asia uh, at a uh, large uh, rate. So, we look first economically at the infrastructure corridors as a kind of supply chain. So, not producing things somewhere in Europe and then taking them just through Russia, for example, but along the way having value added. So it's a kind of a, uh, uh, a, a, a chain reaction of value creation. So we need to create a supply chain, and that supply chain is the basis for launching industries in areas along the corridor. So these are particularly equipment for equipment for construction, for operation maintenance of infrastructure, for urban transport, health and uh, biological equipment, and so forth. I don't want to elaborate that here. Piping and so forth. In that context of that supply chain, develop new product products for export or for uh, pr production. Focus more and more on the production of instruments of production, machine tools and, and similar things, new uh, materials and so forth, and inject new uh, technologies into that process. New cities can be generators of productivity and employment in this context. So we're looking at a process in, in this century of a gigantic new wave of urbanization. So I'm proposing here also creating cities where very, as part of the policy, is to attract the, what I call the Mittelstand, these small and medium-sized, very productive uh, business is a kind of a culture in Germany and in, in, in Switzerland, in Austria, in northern Italy, in Scandinavia, and in some other areas. Create conditions where it becomes very attractive for these kinds of businesses to invest and to create production centers in cities along the, uh, in the infrastructure corridors. So the crisis in Europe can make that also attractive, and the proximity of the corridors to the markets in Asia can make it very attractive to set up such industries uh, uh, along the corridors. Then we have additional points to exploit the strength of Russian basic science and Russian technology, uh, the proximity of Eastern Siberia, I mentioned, if we take that example, to, uh, to Asia, focus on val val uh, value-added uh, processes, which I already mentioned. Well. Equipment for public transport, innovative medical equipment I've already mentioned, nuclear energy. I believe nuclear energy today is in its raw, is in its uh, stone age. We need new forms of nuclear energy. Well, just uh, last point uh, I want to make, and that is that uh, we need really to go back in science also to fundamental progress. Because what brings together the, the moral purpose of science is, is, is not techno, uh, technocratic. The purpose of science is to deal with truth, is the creative p capability of the human mind. And if we make a, a, a union of fundamental science, and uh, which has a mission of, of generating truth, and supporting the lives of human beings who are creative human beings and drawn into that process of progress, then we have a, 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 a process that can make I hope the middle of uh, this century, uh, this, this century, look a little bit better than the present situation. And this reminds me, of course, of the great dream of Leibniz uh, and the found, founding of the academies of science. And Leibniz was, had exactly this notion of unifying fundamental, philosophically motivated science and the physical development of uh, a, a, the economy to, to support a population of creative, working human beings. So. Um, that's in a nutshell my concept, and I also just cannot avoid saying that I would, I'm very worried it would be a terrible thing if the Academy of Sciences in Russia would somehow uh, suffer.
from uh, short-sighted sided policies because we need that. When I say we, I mean the whole world needs Russian science. Thank you.